Las manos de mi madre parecen pájaros en el aire Historias de cocina entre sus manos heridas de hambre Las manos de mi madre saben que ocurre por las mañanas Cuando más a la vida Esperanza. Las manos de mi madre llegan al patio desde temprano. Todo se vuelve fiesta cuando ellas juegan junto a otros pájaros, junto a los pájaros que aman la vida y la construyen con los trabajos. Se vuelve mágico, se vuelve mágico. Oh, 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 oh. Las manos de mi madre me representan un cielo abierto. calientes en los inviernos ellas se brindan cálidas nobles, sinceras limpias de todo ¿Cómo serán las manos del que las mueve gracias al odio las manos de mi madre llegan al patio de este se vuelve fiesta cuando ellas juegan junto a otros pájaros junto a los pájaros que aman la vida y la construyen con los trabajos arde de la leña harina y barro lo cotidiano se vuelve mágico se vuelve mágico oh, oh. manos de mi madre parecen pájaros en el aire historias de cocina entre sus manos heridas de hambre las manos de mi madre saben que ocurre por las mañanas cuando más a la vida las manos de mi madre llegan al patio desde temprano Todo se vuelve fiesta cuando ellas juegan Junto a otros pájaros, junto a los pájaros Que aman la vida y la construyen con los trabajos cotidiano se vuelve mágico, se vuelve mágico. Oh, oh.
cuando ellas juegan junto a otros pájaros, junto a los pájaros que aman la vida y la construyen con lo trabajo, al de la leña, harina y barro, lo cotidiano se vuelve mágico, se vuelve mágico. Las manos de mi madre parecen pájaros en el aire Historias de cocina entre sus manos heridas de hambre Las manos de mi madre saben que ocurre por las mañanas Cuando más a la vida Esperanza. Las manos de mi madre llegan al patio desde temprano. Todo se vuelve fiesta cuando ellas juegan junto a otros pájaros, junto a los pájaros que aman la vida y la construyen con los trabajos. Se vuelve mágico, se vuelve mágico. Oh, 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 oh. Las manos de mi madre me representan un cielo abierto. calientes en los inviernos ellas se brindan cálidas nobles, sinceras limpias de todo ¿Cómo serán las manos del que las mueve gracias al odio las manos de mi madre llegan al patio de este se vuelve fiesta cuando ellas juegan junto a otros pájaros junto a los pájaros que aman la vida y la construyen con los trabajos al de la leña harina y barro lo cotidiano se vuelve mágico se vuelve mágico Trencito corre por el campo, chispa, frente a la estación. Ah, no, ah, no, que suba el pasaje, se mueve. Eh, buenas, este evento será bilingüe, inglés-español, y vamos a compartir unas eh, breves indicaciones de cómo manejar eso usando Zoom. Habrá interpretación simultánea. Eso significa que tendrán que elegir el canal que quieren escuchar, el canal de audio que quieren escuchar, si no manejan ambos idiomas. En si está conectado o conectada o conectada a Zoom por eh, medio de su computadora, al pie de su pantalla, Busquen un icono de un planeta que dice interpretación y ahí pueden hacer clic en ese, en ese botoncito y ahí, ahí eligen inglés o español. Si 
you see that there's a button at the bottom of your screen that looks like a globe. If you click on that and choose interpretation, you can select your language. Y si así se ha conectado con una tableta, un teléfono, es casi igual. Busque un botoncito que tiene tres puntos. Le da ese botoncito y se abre el menú. Elige interpretación de idiomas o language interpretation, si lo tiene en inglés. De ahí escoge el idioma que quiere. Y el último pasito es muy importante. Hay un botón que dice finalizar o done, si lo tienen en inglés. Le dan a ese botoncito. Es todo lo que tienen que hacer. Dots. You click on that, it takes you to a menu, and on the menu you choose language interpretation, um, and then you'll select the language of your preference, and then the last step is important, which is to click on done at the top of the screen. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Um, welcome to everyone. This is the tribute to Alicia Rapko Vive. Uh, Alicia, tribute Alicia Rapko Vive to honor the indelible influence this great and humble soul has had on our personal lives and on the world. My name is Nefer Freeman. I am co-host of the radio show on WPFW Voices with Vision and events coordinator at IPS, the Institute for Policy Studies. I'm also a member of the Black Alliance for Peace and Pan-African Community Action, as well as the International Committee for Peace, Justice, and Dignity that was originally the International Committee for the Freedom of the Cuban Five, which is how I came to know, work with, and befriend Elisa Rapko and her life partner, Bill Hackwell. We've done our best to put together a program for today that adequately honors Alicia. In some ways, this was easy. In many ways, it was difficult. What was easy was getting the great people Alicia touched to come forward and lend themselves to this effort. What was hard was trying to include all of Alicia's greatness into a program that wouldn't be too long. I want to start us off by sharing how I came to meet Alicia and grow to love her as a comrade in the struggle against imperialism and as a dear friend, or I have to say a uh, big sister. For in many ways, Alicia was a big sister to me. I first encountered her from, dis from a distance in meetings of the National Network on Cuba, the NNOC. I was in the no war on Cuba movement in Washington, DC. And at the NNOC meetings, I was noticing, I noticed this quiet, observant, unassuming soul in the meetings who was representing an organization working on the case of the Cuban Five, our brothers, uh, Gerardo, Antonio, Ramon, Fernando, and Rene. I hadn't given her or the organization much thought. Uh, I knew of the case of our brothers and had done a couple of small public awareness events around the case myself in Washington, DC. It wasn't until 2012 that I was formally introduced to Alicia by the, Alicia, by the late Sao Landau. Uh, who was a colleague of mine in IPS, where I work. Saul had mentioned a couple of occasions that I should meet this person, Alicia Rapko, but I wasn't uh, putting a face, the face that I saw in the NNC meetings to who he was talking about until he brought her to my office while they were visiting. They both were visiting in Washington, D.C. at the time. Um, he wanted to make this meeting happen. Uh, he had been telling Alicia the same thing, that, uh, that we needed to meet and start working together. Little did I know uh, that was the beginning of a great chapter in my life. It soon became evident to me that this unassuming person I thought was probably waging a lone effort to free the five uh, was a serious organizer. And I was just one of the people she was pulling together to lead one of the most incredible campaigns for justice I've ever experienced. That year in 2012 um, that Saul uh, introduced us, was the first of the five days for the Cuban Five in Washington, D.C., a week of activities that included lobbying on Capitol Hill, 
performing arts events, panel discussions, movie to screenings, movie screenings. Um, this took place uh, and two subsequent times at, until the remaining of the five still incarcerated released were released in December of 2014. While involved in this campaign, I had some rocky things going on in my life. Uh, and that was how my relationship with Alicia evolved into one of friendship and the big sister like relationship that I mentioned how that came to be. Um, we don't need to go into that. I had, uh, had it not been for Alicia and Bill together, I wouldn't have made it to Cuba in May of 2015 to experience the first May day after all of the five were freed. Alicia's leadership coordinated a truly international network of freedom fighters for the freedom of the Cuban five that then transformed into the International Committee for Peace, Justice, and Dignity to refocus our energies and commitment to ending the cruel, usual, unusual, and unjust punishment against Cuba that is the Cuban, that is the U.S. blockade. I'm honored to be among a core group who worked hard, laughed, and sometimes annoyed one another in the course of getting things done, who I feel an eternal bond with to have to have to give big hugs to hugs to when we meet in person. Alicia was our revolutionary leader and she did an underestimated and maybe underappreciated thing that revolutionary leaders do. They bring people together in love and friendship during the course of building a better world, better and necessary world. Alicia Rapko vive Ali presente. So I'm gonna now introduce my friend and brother Bill Hackwell, Alicia's life partner, to share his reflections and what he has to share with everyone. Thank you, Eric. Uh, on behalf of myself, Alicia's three children, and six grandchildren, we thank you for being here. After Alicia passed, I expected that a lot of people would send their rem remembrance of her because. Being around and working with Alicia always made you feel like you were doing something positive and making some contribution towards a better world. One with you know less injustice, less racism, and more human solidarity. It was an experience. She was always tolerant and easy to work with. And whether it was a long campaign or a short encounter, her leadership style was attractive, always making people feel included and appreciated. Alicia was a socialist, a fetalista to be precise, but that didn't get in the way of her rare ability to bring political circles to work together for common cause. She once said, the success of our efforts and the struggle to free the Cuban five was based on the, in the fact that we open the door wide to work with all sorts of people, some of whom I'm not sure we can even call progressive. Her sincerity always showed through, making people's defenses melt. Danny Glover told me uh, that he could never figure out a way to say no to Alicia. But I want to go back to the response. Uh, what I didn't uh, expect was the avalanche of solidarity and appreciation that we have received and continue to receive from around the world. Alicia always kept her focus on the objective, on the goals, and never ever looked for any accolades for her efforts. Perhaps why that's why she's getting some in now. In all the projects and campaigns that she and I worked on, we had an unwritten division of labor. We never started off trying to figure out who was going to be responsible for what. We just knew. Um, her, uh, Alicia's office was in the kitchen table and mine here on the living room table. And when we did need to figure something out, we would just leave the house and go to walk around, uh, walk the three miles around Lake Merritt. And over. Working on this tribute made me realize how little I actually knew about the depth of what Alicia did because of all the great things, there were thousands of little things that went unnoticed. Alicia would have taken the lead on putting it together, an event like this, and it may, and it's, made me think that you never really know a person until you've had to lift their load. I know that there are many of you who would have liked to tell a story about Alicia today, but we have had to limit it to just a few of her closest collaborators. 
We hopefully are going to have a live event in the Bay Area in the not too distant future and one in Cuba when possible. Now, having said that, of all the people that Alicia worked with, none was closer than Graciela Ramirez. Now the editor of Cuba, Cuba in Resumen and the coordinator of the International Committee for Peace, Justice and Dignity in Havana. Both Alicia and Graciela were pushed into the struggle in Argentina during the US-backed military dictatorship of the 1970s. And although they didn't know each other at the time, they could not have become closer sisters than they did, especially in the long campaign to free the Cuban flag and constant work to end the blockade of Cuba. So now in the spirit of International Women's Day, you will see in Graciela's intervention how it was that these two powerful women be became even stronger and more effective in the struggle by working together as one. Thank you. Hola, soy Graciela Ramirez desde La Habana. Hello, I'm Graciela Ramirez, speaking to you from Havana. I'm a personal friend of Alicia and a comrade in struggle for so many years, almost 20 years, exactly, in this year of 2022. First of all, I, I want to express my gratitude for this event in which we, we'd like to be able to participate in, in real time, but because of the blockade, that's not possible. And so we have to send videos this way. And I want to spend, spend a very special embrace to Gabi, Elen, Juanito, Alisa's grandchildren, Che Simon, who was born this January 5th, and to our very dear Bill, our brother, and Alicia's compañero, Nalda, Cheryl, Netva, all of our compañeros who has been in this battle with us for so many years and who loved Alicia so much, um, to, to Kimber, to the Kimbers and, and Manuelito de los Santos, everyone who's going to participate in this event, the Chilean who would sing us songs and keep our spirits up. And I want to talk about Alicia, not from the point of view of the Cuban fine only, but also as a personal friend, as a comrade in the struggle, as someone from Argentina. Alicia has been an example for so many in her life, and it's so difficult because it's so difficult to express everything that we feel when we talk about her. She was a great example as a revolutionary, a great example as a mother, as a grandmother, as a friend, as a compañera, as a comrade. She was vital, full of life, happy, a great friend, and we could spend hours talking about a particular issue. And for many years, that meant the campaign for the freedom of our five brothers and and of course always you know in the background we would also be talking about the situation in latin america and cuban the blockade and this absurd and, and terrible harm that the united states policy is causing to a country who's, who's done nothing it's a small island who's only wanted to share love health education who's wanted to share all it has and a little it has. Alicia and I belong to a generation that has gone through a lot and th with the passage of time, we have learned how to deal with, with pains, with absences, how to live with that within our souls. When Alicia grew ill, I somehow couldn't think about a future without her physical presence. And, and 
all of that great resistance that she put up against this um, illness. We, we would talk a lot and I would nag her because I didn't want her to continue to lead so many activities or to be at the forefront of them, like the campaign for the Nobel Prize for the Henry Reeve Brigade, Cuban doctors. I didn't want her to be participating so much in all of those things that we could think of. And that was came from a place of love because I wanted Anisia to be able to overcome her illness to stay with us. And that's why it's so difficult to talk because of it. her departure is very painful. It is a great pain to the face. And I have to be strong to not check in with her every day, ask how she is, ask how the children were growing up, our nieces and nephews coming up during our story, everything that we're facing. And we, we don't, I don't get that message anymore from her. Gray, estas? Graciela, are you there? And I would say from the island, si, Ali, dime. Yes, Ali, tell me. We worked together very intensely, but we were also so happy. And in one conversation, we can talk about a very difficult political issue and a recipe. And then we would laugh together because we would say the intelligence services are going to go crazy trying to understand what we're talking about between recipes, natural remedies for the children, and an important issue to, to discuss. Alicia was a great revolutionary. And like so many people, I consider that she is a daughter of the Madres of the Plaza in Mayo and the Cuban Revolution, two causes very important to us. And you know that we would use the second name of our disappeared loved ones. And there was even a beautiful documentary called Looking for Mabel, Buscando Mabel, who was um, someone that went to school with Alicia, who was a very dear friend who was disappeared. Alicia's is a story of resistance, of bravery, of courage, of assuming or taking on very great problems and feeling that rupture internally inside. And we became so close with, the, with Cuba, not because we're friendly from just a, a revolutionary standpoint, we know that, you know, in a place where so much falsehood and hypocrisy, all of that, that here, we see that, that Cuba comes as a, a light, a beacon of light for the poor of Latin America. And Alicia had so much love and no fear of talking where it would be necessary about her commitments. She had a great commitment, a great ethic, and great morality. And so we were political friends, and, and we weren't, because we do have political analyses that we share, but she had another ambition. She wanted to serve the people of Cuba and also the people of the United States. And a lot of the times we felt pain because of their numbness and deception. Many times it's, it's like being anesthetized in the face of such a strong reality. And she chose the most difficult place to struggle, which is from the conscious, I mean, from the point of view of a militant and that's, fighting from within that monster to try to change the reality a little bit and to try to reach this level of, of sanity that that uh, neighboring country should be able to share. Life can be very unfair and it can snatch from us those who we most need and most love and very important actors. But life can also be a, an example. And we have the example of her struggle, selflessness, and ethic. And 
strength. And we need to be within that example and carry on what Alicia was not able to finish, which is all of what we still have to overcome and all the work we still have to do. All I ask is that you never say Alicia is not here. Alicia lives inside of, of all of us who know how to carry her with us in the ideas, in the resistance of the Cuban revolution. Alicia lives within the mothers and grandmothers of the Argentine people, the social justice struggles of the North American people, in immigrants in Europe, in standing up for the role of the repressed peoples and the pe struggle for Palestine. And Alicia lives against those who would be surrounding and besieging a country like Russia, which is provoking a disaster in this world. Because of this media campaign about it, Alicia would be against all of that. She would be in campaign for Julian Assange and Lula and Cristina. And those are the things that we have to continue. And we have to be strong among all of us, compañeros. I really can't hold back the emotion when I talk about Alicia. And I apologize. But that emotion is part of our feelings. And I'm never going to remember her with sadness. I will always remember her with great joy and gratitude for her friendship. I dreamt about her two months before October 4th, which was her last presentation. I dreamt that she was alive, vital, and beautiful, as always, in Cuba. And she came to me with Bill, and she said, I have to go quickly. And she did this gesture that's very Argentine gesture. And she says, I have to go quickly. And she gave me a small bunch of flowers. And I would say, Alicia, but how could you leave now? What do you mean you need to leave quickly? Look at all of the things that we still have to do. And and she said, I can't stay, I can't stay. And I said, Alicia, but she didn't give me time to send something to your grandchildren or to your children. And she said, I have to go. And Bill, standing behind her, would gesture to me like there was something important that Abby had to go to. And I took that dream as some kind of premonition, but I never talked about it. And I thought that time was running out. And well, I tried to be with her, accompany her, even with the songs that we liked so much, like Gracias a la Vida. and being strong to be able to face all of this. So that's what I wanted to share with you, compañeros, that we be strong and that we never forget that Alicia lives. The on December 17th, 2014, there was a tremendous victory when the Cuban Five, the final uh, three of the Cuban Five came home. The following July, there was another victory that also could not be, has not been turned back. And that is the raising of the Cuban flag on 16th Street at the then what became the Cuban Embassy. Uh, today we're we're very uh, proud and honored to have with us the current uh, ambassador to the United States um, from Cuba, uh, Lianis Torres, and we're going to welcome her for an introduction to the first ambassador. <laughs> since in the last 50 years. Uh, Ambassador Torres, please. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, Cheryl. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to, to thank Bill for, for giving me the opportunity to, he, to be here today with all of you. 
honoring a remarkable uh, woman like Alicia. I also want to, to thank all the friends here that, uh, like Alicia, have worked and continue working for a better world and, for, uh, and to end the, the, the blockade. Cubans will never forget Alicia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Especially because <clears throat> she was one of the leaders of an entire country's struggle to, to bring uh, their sons back home. And that's why we keep Alicia in a special, very special place in our hearts, but a place of uh, immense gratitude. It was very sad to hear the news about Alicia's uh, depart departure. We were not prepared for that. Alicia was something, someone uh, full of joy, full of kindness, and also had an unwavering will to, to keep fighting for what she thought uh, was right. Um, this world needs more people like her. And uh, having said that, it is my pleasure I, as uh, Cheryl said before, to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Ambassador uh, Jose Ramon Cabañas, who as, an amb as a Cuban, as the Cuban ambassador to the US uh, had the opportunity to work alongside uh, with Alicia and the honor of calling her a friend. So thank you so much. Well, first, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this uh, tribute to all our friends in the United States and other parts of the world. Bill, our close friends, uh, and many others who will be providing views, ideas, reactions about uh, Alicia, her life, uh, the friendship uh, with her. Uh, I would like to talk about her in present tense and not, not in, in past. It's impossible to think about her uh, if not uh, as someone who is with us today, someone who is thinking about a better future, someone who is pushing for solidarity towards Cuba. But, uh, of course, we have many remembrances about Alicia in her campaign to free the five, the Cuban, the Cuban five. And among them, I would like to, to talk about what happened back in, in 2014, mid-year, around June probably, well before the announcement uh, about Cuba and United States uh, to uh, retake a bilateral uh, diplomatic relations uh, and all the announcements that were made at the time. I remember that was the last campaign to free the, the Cuban Fives, actually to the, the remaining three who were still in prison. And when the, she finished uh, one of the, her presentations in, in Washington, D.C., she suddenly said, well, you know what? Even if next year they are free, we still we should gather, we should come together, and we should talk about solidarity towards Cuba, and we have to keep, let's say, this family uh, running. And in some way, what you have uh, this day is, is a family gathering, you know, people who met her and, and know her. And she said, well, we have to continue this path. We have to push for solidarity towards the Cuban people. We have to continue after the five, how their, their life go, the families, uh, everything. And she was right, actually. And even uh, when they were free, I mean, the next year, the 2015, we were right in the middle of the bilateral negotiations. It seems at the time that the uh, ties between Cuba and United States would take a different path. But uh, as you know, we had some progress uh, and some uh, rollbacks. But always you find her and Bill, both together, thinking about a better future, uh, implementing ideas that uh, probably nobody cared about, about them because uh, people thought they were impossible. But uh, Alicia always had the feeling that she could do it. And she had a special sentiment to bring people together, to push forward, always smiling. I remember 
when other groups of solidarity towards Cuba and the United States were thinking about caravans or other initiatives. She, she, was right, she and Bill were right in the middle of, of every uh, event, every uh, new gathering, and uh, they were key people, and as they are actually, again, talking in present tense about how to bring our, our people uh, together, how to enhance bilateral ties between Cuba and the United States. Thank you again for this invitation and uh, coming forward, uh, remembering uh, Alicia and Bill and her work. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, both the ambassadors for their presentations today. You know, we're just days away now from March 8th, International Women's Day. And we're remembering a remarkable woman leader. Our next speaker is Adriana Perez. She is also a very remarkable woman. She is the partner of Gerardo Hernandez. Uh, she is a former member of the National Assembly. She is the mother of three miraculous children and a tireless fighter. She traveled the world demanding the freedom of the Cuban Five. Now we'll he hear from Adriana. At the same time, for us, wife um, of, the, of the Cuban Five, Alicia had a very important presence in our lives not only because she contributed to the liberation of our family members, but because she always acted like part of our family with her sensitivity, her kindness, with the discipline with which she approached the campaign, which of course needed direction. There were moments in which we couldn't do certain actions And there were others in which Alicia played an important role by providing her opinion, her suggestions, or her creativity to give new meaning to the campaign from within the United States. Which is where we had to win this battle. I remember that Alicia fought within Congress when a lot of people, including people in solidarity with Cuba, thought that it was impossible or that it shouldn't be done. And Alicia insisted with that sweetness, with that confidence um, to convince people that it was necessary for the cause. And that's what she did. We went to Congress. I remember that Alicia in this event in Puerto Alegre, when we were basically taping, taking our first steps in the campaign, which was in 2003, Alicia was the one who introduced us to Danny Glover, who later became an important fighter as well, a great advocate for the cause of the Cuban Five. He visited Gerardo, and we owe that to Alicia. She helped us to open doors and paths, but Alicia was an active person. She was someone who gave her all. Uh, she gave her all for the common good, for a cause, uh, a Cuban cause. Um, and she had a great sense of duty. But I remember that during that trip to Puerto Alegre, um, Alicia um, insisted when some people didn't want Danny Glover to interview us or, or Freddy Beto to donate to the cause, which wasn't even what they expected, but later they were able to convince Freddy to join the cause um, with their arguments and with their words. And since then, it wasn't just a campaign relationship that was fomented, but a friendship, a brotherhood. Um, I remember that Alicia, who constantly laughed at all of our jokes, um, the things that we talked about as amongst women, um, about things that were hard for us to deal with, um, both in our personal lives and in our public life. We were always joking and always looking for space to eat together, to go out. 
Alicia would accompany us to the provinces um, where we also had to organize people so that the campaign could flow internationally. But Alicia, in, in my case, um, would also share a lot of her, well, not really secrets, but she confided in us about her relationships with her children, her relationship with Bill, with her friends, um, how it was sometimes difficult to influence the campaign. And, and Alicia, who would also make uh, empanadas at our house, um, she loved empanadas and she would always travel with the ingredients to make them at home. And that's how she shared Cuban things, Argentine things, the things that she learned during her time in the United States. But I also remember something about Alicia, um, which was of all, all of the gifts that Gerardo gave me. Um, there was a gift for our 20th wedding anniversary when the two of them worked together to buy me a ring. This was a ring that Gerardo had liked, um, but they worked together, they collaborated, um, collaborated with Alicia to get it to me. And a lot of things like that, um, like the story of how an insemination could have been um, before it was achievable. And this was jokes between Gerardo and Alicia and Bill. Um, to me, Alicia is always present. Okay, um, I think that's me. <laughs> um, so uh, it is my honor to now introduce to you a video sent by our brother, Geraldo Fernandez, Cuban five political prisoner and currently the national president of the Cuban Committee in Defense of the Revolution, the CDR. Following his video will be excerpts of a conversation with Fernando Gonzalez, currently president of, the Cuba, of Cuba's Institute of Friendship with the People, Rene Gonzalez, Antonio Guerrero, uh, Ramon Labanino, and the, uh, the of the Cuban Five, and Olga Sal Salud Nueva, uh, a mainstay along with Adriana of the mothers of wives and wives who became the face of the fight to free the Cuban Five heroes from U.S. prisons. It was uh, 2001. We had been in prison for almost three years, since 1998. And those three years, we were basically unknown by, by many people uh, in the Solidarity Movement and, and in, in Cuba. Most of the people didn't know about the five because the case had not been uh, public still in Cuba. But with that uh, speech of Fidel, when he said Volveran, the case was made public. And uh, I guess very few days after that, we started receiving letters from Cuba and from other countries and from the US. Of course, the letters from the US arrived first. And I, I uh, couldn't say whether it was the very first one, but among, among the very first one letters that I received, was one from uh, Alicia. And uh, the first thing I noticed was the name. It says Alicia Franco. I, I, I said, well, she might be uh, from Poland or something. And the second thing I noticed was her, her script, her, her letter, her writing. And I said, it, was, it, it must be a very old person. Years, years after that, uh, we, we used to joke about it, about the fact that I thought because of her writing that she was an old person. And right then, uh, a relationship started. And uh, I, I could uh, resume it by saying that uh, it is impossible to write or, or speak about the history of the Cuban Five without mentioning the name of, uh, of Alicia Franco. Uh, as soon as we started the, the corresponding each other, uh, she started writing to the five, but for some reason, 
the relation with, between uh, uh, she and, and myself and Bill start getting uh, closer and closer. And I was lucky enough a year after that, a year after we started our, our writing, uh, the five of us were transferred to uh, five different prisons in the US. And I was lucky enough to be sent to California, Lompoc, near Santa Barbara. And as soon as I get there, Alicia and Bill wrote to me, apply for, for the form to, to be visitors and started visiting me right there in Lompoc. It was the, 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 my first encounter with the Solidarity Movement in person. And, uh, and the relation continued to develop. We, at the end of my imprisonment, it was more than a hundred times that Alicia and Bill visited me. And I remember two years after I was in Lampa that uh, Lampa was uh, uh, closed down. It became a medium facility. So all dangerous people that were there had to be transferred to another prison. They made a new prison in Victorville Desert in California. And when, when they told me, you're going to Victorville, I remember the first thing I thought of, it was how far, how far that would be from Alicia's home. Uh, and whether they would be able to, to visit me, to keep visiting me in prison. And, and uh, to my uh, surprise, again, as soon as I get to Victorville, the first people who visited me were them, Alicia and Bill. But it was not only that, not, not only what the visit by them represented to me, what uh, having the possibility of counting on them represented to me, but also the support that they uh, gave to other people's visits. Uh, I, I would say I, I could mention Father Lapsley from South Africa, I could mention Father uh, Bottom from uh, UK, Danny Glover, Saul Londo, many, many uh, people that uh, were able to visit me in prison receive directly the help of, of Alicia and, and Bill and of course my own family, my mother, which I was able to see before she passed away and my sister, my, my uh, nephew and niece, all were supported directly by Alicia, who escorted them and, and, and helped them to, to uh, deal with the life in, in the U.S. and, and with those uh, days where they were visiting me to, to be able to, to be there, to live there, to get around. It was fundamental, essential, the, the support that Alicia and Bill gave to myself. Uh, I could say with certainty that uh, I could be speaking about her by many, many hours, and still it would, wouldn't be enough. <clears throat> it wouldn't be enough of everything that I could say, because uh, words cannot describe the, the importance of the relation of the importance of their, her friendship. I, I used to call her my sister, and I used to call her my uh, sec, abbreviation of secretary, because my life in prison would have been way, way more hard than it was if I, would not able, uh, if I wasn't able to, to count on, on Alicia and, and Bill. Just to mention an example, uh, last week here in Havana, we, Adriana and myself, presented uh, a book, and uh, that uh, audio book includes uh, a, uh, a CD with uh, music songs by a uh, famous Cuban singer, Waldo Mendoza, who was inspired in the letters, in some of the letters uh, written, uh, sent between Adriana and, and me. And myself, and uh, he made they made that book, and we were presenting it. But every time we present that book, we have to mention that uh, letters included in in, in that book, uh, poems, my cartoons, postcards, 
everything, basically every, everything in the book exists today thanks to the help of Alicia and Bill. Because when I have the experience of, of sending a letter to somebody directly and the letter getting lost to my family, to Adriana, to other people in Cuba, I realized that it would be uh, better for me to send it to Alicia right there in California. And as soon as I get the, my letters or my, my cartoons, or my points, everything, they uh, scan it, my photos, they scan it, save it, and then send it to, to the people, to, to Cuba or who, whoever it was in other country. And thanks to that, today, most of my material, most of my letters, uh, uh, certainly all the cartoons are uh, uh, safe today because of, uh, because of the help by Alicia and Bill. That was very, very uh, important and is only one example of, of how uh, I really appreciate her relationship. He uh, became, she became uh, part of our family. Uh, when, I, when we came back to Cuba, we uh, couldn't enjoy completely the victory of our return until the day we met them in Cuba, Alicia and Bill. I, I have very nice memories of uh, the first time that the five visited uh, uh, the, the, this uh, project in, in Jaimanitas of uh, uh, what's the name of the, uh, the guy? ¿Cómo se llama el, este hombre de Jaimanita que tiene la... Fuster. He wouldn't, he wouldn't forgive me for having uh, uh, missed his name. But I, I, I remember as it was today when we, the five, visited together for the first time Fuster's project in Jaimanita and Alicia and Bill were with us and those images existed and, and, and that it is uh, awesome to be able to see uh, the, the images that and, and having been there the, for the first time with them, Fuster remember that with very special love and, and so so we, the five. And, and uh, I, I could mention many other things through the years of my imprisonment. Today in Cuba, I used to go to a school I used to go to, for example, La Colmenitas headquarters or to a museum, and, and, and to, a, to a, the house of a famous baseball player uh, as Pedro Medina, and I find there uh, a card that I sent myself from prison using uh, a picture of uh, a picture of the struggle a picture taken in one of the many uh, rallies for or, or activities for our freedom. One of the many uh, rallies, uh, protests against uh, the US, uh, uh, the White House or, or in any other country. And those photos were sent to me by Alicia and, and Bill. I used it to make cards and send it to people. But that, that card has on it the logo of the Cuban Five. And since I couldn't be, I used to write 10, 12, 15 letters every day, and I couldn't be drawing the logo of the five in every letter or, or in every car, that would be very difficult. So Alicia sent me to prison, the logo, the little logo that I have made in prison, I, she used to print it, and inside her letters, she sent me the little logos, and, and I go and cut it myself and paste it and thanks to that, many of my letters, many of, many of uh, the cards that I sent had that little logo that she had sent me. But not only that, that logo exists because of Alicia. It was uh, in the very uh, few weeks after I, I had been in, in Lompoc that I received a letter by Alicia uh, telling me that they, they were preparing uh, a, a rally, uh, uh, an act of solidarity for the Cuban Five, and they, they wanted to have a, a poster or something to show up. And then she asked me a, a drawing or, or, or something that could uh, be used on those posters. And I, I, was, I was in, a, the prison was in lockdown at the time. 
and I, 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 had, I was, not, was not able to have any pencil or everything. I remember I had one color, which was twin color, red and blue. And uh, I started thinking, what, what could I do? And I made, I came up with the idea of the logo of the Q5. And uh, I remember I have to use uh, a cup, the cup of a uh, mouse wash uh, pot to draw the, the inside circle. And then there was another thing that, that uh, uh, we have in prison. It was another uh, part like this. And I used the cap to draw the, the outside part of the, of the circle. And I uh, used the red color, the blue color, and I, I used a little bit of coffee, powder coffee, that it wasn't good to drink, it was good to paint. And I painted the star. And I sent it to Alicia. And Alicia was the one that started uh, using it, distributing it. And, and that's, that's the reason the, the logo came out to be uh, kind of famous and, and, and a representation of the struggle of the q 5 I, I always uh, owe that to, to her. And uh, as a part of the family that she uh, get to be, the kids, my kids, Hema, Gerardito, and, and Amber, they call her uh, Uncle Alicia, Aunt, Aunt Alicia. Aunt Alicia, every time they see a photo, they, they, they ask for Aunt Alicia. Uh, there are four of us, Bill, of Alicia, holding the three of them, since they were very, very, very uh, small. And, and for, for us, that, uh, that's, that's a very, moving moment when, when we start watching uh, those photos and we realize uh, how important that person was for in, in our lives. We owe so many things to her. And uh, still, it, it is difficult to, to talk about her in past time because she's, she's, we feel that she's always with us and she always will be. Now, the, the video of the compilation. In Miami, ah, when you when you were there. When the Carmenita went there, well, Alicia and Bill and Hilbert. Carmenita went uh, over there. Alicia and Bill and Hilbert Brownson, all of those wonderful people. They connected with the story of the Colmenita and they were with them for the entire tour. And well, I knew that the youth of the Colmenita were going to go to our friend's house in Miami. And so I went to wait for them and I surprised them. They didn't know anything. And Alicia showed up with Bill. Bessie Francis was there. And Gra. And Maruchi. Yes, Maruchi. Yeah, yeah, I, I have uh, uh, photos. That's where, you know, the, the photo of the Colmenita that Bill said afterwards with the, with the island and everything. Yeah, well, that was, that was an incredible time. And I remember vividly Alicia's excitement then. Wasn't your mother there too? Yeah, mommy was there too. But uh, Alicia's excitement was just overflowing, you know, everyone felt it, you know, Bill, Daisy Francis, everyone. But I think that uh, Alicia was the mirror image in the United States of another incredible Argentine, Gra. You know, you know, they had some differences in their temperament, but I think that Alicia had the same kind of drive that Gra had, but it's softer again in her, in her manner, perhaps. But I remember when I, when I, ruin the coll colloquium that the, the the youth wanted to do here because I said, no, everybody knows the story here in Cuba. You got to go do it in the United States. And I suggest that they do it in Washington. And Gra, of course, you know, was just, uh, on board from the beginning and, and connected Alicia. And really, Alicia was the person who organized everything on on the ground that was here. And she been working hard, calling people, getting people together, and they did it well. Really, really, that that made an impact. And he got to 
to the State Department. Alicia went with a uh, delegation from here, and Jacob was with uh, Alicia too. And you know, they knocked at the door of the Department of State, and they, you know, spoke with um, the officials from the uh, Obama administration. And I think that that really shows the drive that she had. And, you know, and you would see her, and you would look at her. Maybe she didn't she didn't seem didn't seem that way. But when she decided that she was going to do something, that she took on a task, then she would just do it and persist. And it was really an an incredible capacity to do that. And in this struggle uh, for the five, you know, we have to thank so many people who have done so many things. There's no doubt. So that Alicia would be inscribed in, in golden lettering on this this victory that we had uh, against this aggression from, from empire, which is what the story of the five was really. And it's one of many, right, that we keep that we keep struggling against. And that's inspired perhaps by people like Alicia. Well, I'd love to tell a story. There was um, a time when I was in Wisconsin, when there was one of those bitter winters. It was very cold. It was like 20, 25 degrees under zero. And my grand, my mother was visiting. And Alicia is the person who was with her. And my mother uh, got got sick. She had a flu and she, you know, lost her, her voice. You know, she was a fever. And she was in this little hotel in this, you know, tiny town that, you know, barely had they had like 10 little houses. And uh, Alicia was a person who was with her. My mother couldn't come for two weekends in a row because she was so sick. And Alicia was taking care of her the entire time. She was the one who was looking out for her. And I know that that really caused tension in her because she commented later to me that, you know, she she was the one who had to, had to figure it out. But I would tell her that I knew that my mother was sick and she could barely talk. You know, you can hear her voice, but I really felt at ease knowing that she was the one who was with her. So, you know, from that human point of view, it, it was extraordinary. We met Alicia at the beginning of the 2000s, and this is 2022 now. And we met her through Graciela, our sister Graciela, who we met in Arlene's house in, in 2000. Well, it was in like 2001, 2002, around there very much at the beginning of the of the of the battle and for us it's difficult to talk about alicia because well we met her through graciela who we met through arlene and arlene had this uh, project of this committee of solidarity with the five she had she had that idea immediately and she started building that up forming that idea and she introduced us to alicia and we have to remember that alicia and Gracia these Gaciela have a very a close um, bond. And we talk about Alicia and the present and the battle for the five, everything that she did inside of the United States. But she has been a combatant since she was in, in Argentina and she lost her comrades in the struggle, her friends, family. And, and she's been a fighter since she was very young, since they were both very young. And so that's why they have such a a close bond, Graciela and Alicia, coming up from that same same history. And I can't tell you exactly when we met Alicia because she was one of those people who would come in with this tenderness and joy. People who who really never lost their tenderness. And I, I speak in the present because to me, she is present. And it is incredible that someone who had gone through so much in their life personally, so many losses. But when you met Alicia, it didn't seem that it was someone who was resentful or sad. No, quite the opposite. It was a strength combined with this incredible tenderness and joy. And so seeing Alicia and looking at Alicia's eyes, eyes and looking at Alicia's smile, it gives you strength. And it would really get to, the, she would look at the smallest detail. And, and sometimes you wouldn't pay pay attention to, to it because you think that the most important thing was this cause that united us 
you know, for the freedom of the five, but she would focus also on the details, like, look at this beautiful little girl, let's take a picture because one of the parents need to, fathers need to see this. And so she, would, in the plaza and the patio, she would take pictures of the, of the wives and the children. We've faced a lot of loss. And, you know, life is that way. We've lost, you know, mothers, brothers, sisters. And I think that with Alicia, we gained a sister. We gained a sister who will have a special place in our hearts, that special place where sisters are. But she lives on. She lives. Because when my daughter Yvette talks about Alicia, she says, my, my auntie Alicia. My tia Alicia, is the, the daughter Elizabeth says that. When we talk about Alicia, we say our sister Alicia. And so Alicia lives. And it's good to remember her that way. And I have to apologize to her to, that I'm remembering her with tears because we have to remember her alive, happy, and always in the struggle very much in the struggle. Like Graciela. Graciela, when she joins a cause, she sees it to the end. And the end of this cause is that they, they, they helped us take it to the end. And, and the end was the happy ending, that you're here in our homeland. And I think that Alicia in her last moments was also thinking about that. That she dedicated her life to just causes. But she saw one which is your turn. Okay. Um, one of the things that was mentioned earlier uh, by Ambassador Cabanas was that Alicia, even before the Cuban Five came home, had talked about what would happen when they were freed, even before there was an inkling that it was going to happen. One of the projects that, that Alicia took on after the Freedom of the Cuban Five and something that had been wanted um, since 2004, when the Network in Defense of Humanity was formed uh, through uh, the initiative of Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, uh, a, a U.S. branch of that network was hoped for and anticipated. And it was after uh, when Alicia turned her attention to forming it that a U.S. chapter was uh, eventually came into being. We're um, it's an international organization. It exists in 30 countries. And we have uh, with us Ariana Lopez, who is a member of the Secretariat of the Network in Defense of Humanity in Cuba, who worked closely with Alicia in her service. The sound on this broadcast is very difficult and it shows the, the difficulties in overcoming the blockade uh, and, and the, the restrictions that are put on communication. Uh, we look forward to hearing her words now, uh, Ariana Lopez. Hello, my name is Ariana Lopez. I work in the Network for the Defense of Humanity, Cuban chapter. I'm part of the Executive Secretariat and I have worked with Alicia, our friends, as we affectionately called her, our querida Alicia, our dear Alicia, for, for many years in the network. And what can I say about Alicia? Alicia was a tireless fighter, a dear friend. 
I think that if there is something I always admired about her and will continue always admiring about here is that um, she was very brave because it's not the same to fight in other countries, Cuba, Venezuela, Argentina, Ecuador. It's, it's not the same as fighting within the United States and fighting for just causes within the United States. And that is something that she developed till, till its ultimate consequences. She was consistent with her principles and her ideas, fighting for a better world. And she never trembled before any threat that could be made against her for defending the rights of other people for whatever reason had been imprisoned, like the struggle of the of the five Cuban heroes, or of peoples who are currently being massacred, for example, the Palestinian people, Palestinian cause. And there are millions of examples of her struggle in the streets defending those causes. And it's it's very it's very complicated to think that we won't have her, again, her voice, her presence. It's very complicated to contemplate. It's very difficult. It's difficult for me. I think it's difficult for all of us who knew her to, to adapt to this idea. And on the other hand, there are, there, there are funny anecdotes sometimes or beautiful anecdotes that remain with me. One time I, I called her for a conference of the International Network and she said, Ariana, I'm not an intellectual or an artist because our network is called the Network of Intellectuals and Artists and Social Movements in Defense of Humanity. And I told her, but you're a social fighter. You have broad, vast experience. You know, uh, this is actually, as was said earlier, a family gathering. It's a gathering of people who have come to know each other and struggle together uh, for many years. I have the privilege of introducing uh, someone who is part of that family uh, too. Her name is Kenya Serrano. She is the Dean of the Preparatory Faculty at the University of Havana and was president of the Cuban Institute for Friendship of the People, ECAP, during the struggle for the freedom of the Cuban Five. So we welcome uh, Kenya's message. Dear Bill Hackwell, Dear members of Alicia's family, dear friends all. It is a fact, and Alicia is not physically with us anymore. And it is a very sad moment for all of us. Of course, I'm here joining this gathering for Alicia's life with all my heart and expressing many feelings that are coming exactly right now and since the first minute we heard the, such a bad news. First of all, since then, I've been wondering why Alicia is so relevant in our lives. And there are many reasons. First of all, because of her human character, because of her values, because of her strength to face life, because of the way she was able to mobilize people's feelings, because of the way she was able to connect with different groups and scenarios and events and situations and networks. Alicia is part of our movement and she is a real example of a revolutionary, able to combine her personal life, 
her daughters and sons, their granddaughters and sons, her love build with all the struggles. And of course, when we talk about Alicia, it is something that I will always remember about her, and it is her capacity to build unity. The way Alicia worked with the National Network on Cuba as one of the coordinators. The way Alicia organized many, many events, knocking doors, asking support, asking different personalities, no matter if they uh, belong to the mainstream in the US or in Europe or in many other geographies in the world, or even with just simple people, regular persons, just people that belong to different trade unions and, and other institutions, and she was able to go with her smile and talk and convince and have the patience to wait. Sometimes she had to wait for long times. Some other moments she achieved victories just like that because she was able to convince a lot of persons about the struggle to free the Cuban Five, the struggle to end the, the US blockade, the struggle for a better and just world. And that's why we need her. We will need her, we will miss her so much. But at the same time, as I remember, I told uh, our comrade and brother Fernando Gonzalez, the president of ICAP, that day that we heard the bad news, the sad news about her loss, we told him, well, right now, the first idea I have is that we have to multiply our actions to work for 100 Alicias, to, to, to become here in many aspects in our lives. Not to stop, not to give up, to continue working 25 hours a day, to try to accept and incorporate to our movements and to our space in terms of the revolutionary struggle that we are, uh, we are all doing in our different sectors of the society, internationally, locally, at the global scale, to incorporate as many people as we can. Alicia is here with us every day, and when I see our sister Graciela Ramirez, when I had her warm hug this morning, when we met to try to express and to send you, Bill and, and family, our heart through these words that I'm trying just to organize, I don't know if I can. But the main message is to tell you that you are not alone, that we are all there with you, that we are here to tell you that Cuba will continue in the struggle, that all those uh, efforts and, and forces and emotions and spiritual uh, uh, efforts made by Alicia, by you, but all our friends in this, the United States, by Alicia's family uh, specifically, in order to defend Cuba, to defend our truth, to defend the right to, to self-determination, to defend our uh, perception that we have the opportunity to be a different country. Why not to continue defending this opportunity that we have once we achieve independence in 1959? That we are coming from the legacy of Fidel. We are coming from the legacy of the internationalist Cubans and people that were not born in Cuba, that we all defend the right of each country to select, to choose its own political, economic, and social system. Alicia is here with us in every moment of our lives. I will never forget her, the beautiful days of the colloquium to free the Cuban Five in Holguin, our uh, permanent uh, talks, the moments in the marches with women, with Ramsey Clark when he came, with Dolores Huerta, with other personalities from all over the world that came to Holguin, to Cuba, the, the moment where Dimitri and all our comrades from the International Committee and the, the movement in solidarity with Cuba from more than 50 countries came to Holguin and we say, oe, 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 
and in this oe 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 it is alicia there it is her spirit and i'm convinced that we will always be victorious because we have many alicias with us alicia vive la lucha sigue See, uh, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Chilean songwriter, singer, songwriter, also director at the Council on Hemispheric Affairs, COHA, COHA.org, Patricio Zamorano. Thank you so much, everyone. If you cannot hear me, just let me know right now. It just, uh, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Hermano, um, it's just, it just very emotional for all of us to be here. Um, I personally met Alicia in the, in the most wonderful context in the struggle for uh, against the Cuban blockade, the Cuban embargo, and also through other friends from California who were fighting for human rights in general, because human rights is a permanent struggle still in Latin America and also here in the US. Uh, recently, we were working with her uh, intensely in the campaign for the Nobel Prize for the Cuban doctors. Um, and uh, for all of us, several of the brothers and sisters who are actually here in this, in this call, Medea, I can see Medea, Cheryl, Bill, of course, Netfa, all of us were, were part of that struggle. And, and it was, uh, some of us didn't know what, what was going on with Alicia's health. And, and she was so brave and, and also very, very, very discreet. She didn't want her illness to be part of, or to distract us from the struggle. That's the Alicia that, that we knew, that so strong and, and always fighting, always fighting. So the other moment that comes to my mind is the beautiful moment that we spent with her, with Danny Glover, with Medea, Bill, at the Cuban embassy in 2015, when that embassy was open, that was a beautiful day um, with all the media and 700 people trying to get into the embassy to celebrate that victory. It was her victory because she worked, she had more energy than, than all of us. She had more commitment, she had more leadership. Uh, so that's why it was so shocking uh, when, when we knew that she was not physically here with us, but she, but um, her spirit, her struggle, her her energy, her commitment, especially for the Cuban people, will be always, always with us. So I thought about the song I was going to sing. Um, I'm the director of the Council on Emifega first, but I'm also a singer songwriter. And Alicia loved music, loved the Cuban trova. I thought about singing Gracias a la Vida. I, 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 she asked me more than once to to play that song, but I wanna. I want to offer a tribute to her love for Cuba. So and I'm going to sing a love song, something about love and how we love life and how we love the special moments that this life of ours bring us every single time when we commit, when we believe in poetry, when we believe in art. So Alicia, for Bill, for Cheryl, for all the friends from Cuba and the rest of the uh, Brown Americas, I'm going to offer you this beautiful song from Silvio Rodriguez from Cuba. Que viva Cuba, a donde van. Y a 
acaso se va y a dónde va y a dónde va much Patricio thank you so much um, and that was a, a perfect introduction to the next section of our program which is going to be North American um, people who worked with Alicia and Patricio mentioned the struggle for the Nobel uh, the the Nobel nomination for the uh, Cu Cuba's Henry Reeve brigades and co-coordinator Medea Benjamin is the next speaker. Medea. Well, thank you so much. This is a beautiful tribute and I send so much love to Bill and the family. And uh, thank you for the honor of letting me join in with these wonderful speakers today. I remember first seeing Alicia really in action uh, during the campaign for the Cuban Five. And I remember one time in Washington, D.C., seeing this very beautiful, passionate woman sweeping into the room, greeting everyone with a huge smile, sparkling eyes, and asking in the sweetest of ways for each one of us to do the impossible to help with the cause. She asked me to reach out to a famous artist, to get support from a well-known academic, to get a message to a congressional office, and you couldn't say no to Alicia. All you could do was hope that she would forget what she asked of you. But no, no luck there because she was always following up with phone calls, emails, persistent reminders. So you had to do what she asked. And lo and behold, you found that you were able to do the impossible to actually reach that movie star, to actually get that academic to sign a letter, to get that meeting in Congress. Alicia asked for the impossible and made it possible through sheer determination, passion, 
and conviction. I had so much admiration for Alicia and really wanted to work more closely with her. And I got my chance when we started the campaign in 2020 to nominate the Cuban Medical Brigades for the Nobel Peace Prize, and we became the co-chairs. We built this fabulous international campaign supported by heads of state from Latin America, intellectuals from throughout the region, prestigious medical groups, Alicia saw the campaign as a great organizing tool. And just like with the Cuban Five, she worked day and night. I loved working with Alicia because she was so creative, so reliable. She had so many contacts throughout the world. And most of all, because she was a joy to work with. Our meetings with the committees were also social events because Alicia knew we had to not only build the work, but build community. I always look forward to our meetings, our phone calls, our online chats. Why? Because I just loved working with Alicia. But there was something I never knew through it all. And that was that Alicia was sick, very sick. And despite our daily interactions, she never said a word. And I kept pondering this over in my mind. Why didn't she tell me? Why didn't she allow us to share her pain? And how the heck could she keep working when she was so sick? Of course, we all know the answer because she was a revolutionary, because her dedication to the cause was boundless, because she was selfless. I wish I had known about her illness and had been able to shower her with love. But I do know that the best way to pay our respects is to emulate her. What does that mean? to be as warm, as generous, as kind, as passionate, and as devoted as we can be. To be more and more like our dear sister and comrade who showed us exactly what revolutionary love looks like. Viva Alicia Rapko. Thank you so much, Medea. When I introduced Medea, I said North America. And the reason I said North America was because our next speakers are Jeannie and Stephen Kimber, who are talking with us today from Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada. Stephen is the author of What Lies Across the Water, the real story of the Cuban Five. Jeannie was a member of the International Committee for the Freedom of the Cuban Five she helped organize Washington lobbying activities during the campaign to win their freedom. They both say Alicia changed their lives. Kimbers. Thank you, uh, uh, Cheryl. Thank you very much. Uh, it's hard to believe that Alicia has been part of our lives for only a decade because it feels like we've been friends forever. Gerardo was our first connection, of course. I was interviewing Gerardo for my book when he told me I had to contact this woman named Alicia Rapko. She knows everything there is to know about us, he said. Alicia and I agreed to meet after a talk I was giving and during a conference she was organizing in DC in the spring of 2012. As I got up to speak, I noticed a bunch of people with signs milling at the back of the hall. I realized they weren't there for my talk. They were leaving. They had events to organize, people to lobby, the five to free. That was my introduction to what I came to think of as Alicia's army. When I looked around the hall that day, I realized that Jeannie was gone too. She'd also become very quickly a member of Alicia's army. That was our beginning. After my book came out, Alicia organized speaking tours on the East and West Coasts to help spread the story of the five and explain why they needed to be freed now. Somehow, without quite knowing how, I became part of Alicia's army too, lobbying in Congress, speaking at events, accompanying Alicia to the State Department twice to make our case to officials who didn't seem really all that interested in hearing it. Once I even marched in front of the White House carrying a Free the Five placard, something I'd never but done before as a journalist. I did it because Alicia asked. She had a way of asking. 
Two very quick stories. Once when Alicia and I were lobbying a congressman, one of his officials mentioned a man named Jerry, Jeffrey De Laurentiis. He'd just been appointed the new US chief of mission in Havana. I had no idea who he was, but Alicia leaned over and whispered in my ear, he's in your book. She knew my book better than I did because she made it her business to know everything there was to know about the case of the five so she could help to free them. Later, when Jeannie and I visited Bill and Alicia in Oakland, they led us on their famous walk around the lake. About halfway through, Alicia's cell phone rang. It was Gerardo calling from Victorville Prison. It was the first time, in fact, I'd ever actually spoken to him. He wasn't allowed to communicate with me except uh, by letter at that point in time. We talked for a minute or two, and then he said he needed to talk with his secretary again, Alicia. Just before I handed the phone back, Gerardo said, I told you, she's amazing. She was, she is, she always will be. Rest in power, Alicia. Most people today have and will talk about Alicia's amazing activism. And though I stood shoulder to shoulder with her and the International Committee's campaigns to free the five and to end the blockade, I'd like to honor my dear friend by speaking about her love for her children and grandchildren. On a three hour bus ride back from Saint Santa Clara to Havana in the Solidarity Week in May 2015, Alicia confided to me that she didn't know what her life would look like with the five finally freed. There was a huge hole to be filled. We had become grandparents two years before, and I told her my hope that her children would give her that joy. Alicia shared this wish with her kids, and Alicia's children understood the assignment. In 2015, Wani and Feli's daughter, Miranda, was the first to bring Alicia a new name, Abuela. And Alicia was on a plane to Venezuela as soon as possible to meet her. Next came Emiliana, Gabby and Oscar's baby in 2016, who soon was spending her days with Bill and Ali, bringing great joy and exhaustion in equal parts. In 2017, Eileen and Garrett's baby boy, Emmett, was born, and Los Angeles was added to the travel agenda. Ayel, Emmy's brother, joined Bill and Ali's daycare center in 2018 with his sister, who had renamed Alicia Abby. Wani and Feli, now in Argentina, welcomed Miranda's sister, daughter Marita in August 2020. And finally, Eileen and Garriott's new baby, Che Simone, born this January, who Bill and I believe kept Alicia living until she heard the baby cry and knew her daughter and grandson were safely arrived. Alicia brought that same huge love to her friends, the warriors, her mate, and most of all, to the love of her life, husband, Bill Hackwell. Te amo, mi hermita. I will miss you forever. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen and Jeannie. Um, our next speaker is somebody who worked side by side with Alicia through the National Network on Cuba. I'm very happy that Nalda Vigezi uh, has agreed to be with us today. Uh, she worked with Alicia for more than 10 years in the NNOC and even longer than that in the Solidarity Movement. Nalda, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. And, and thank you for everyone who has put this tribute together, the interpreters who are working today, um, everyone who, who made it happen. You know, you're the kind of people that that Alicia honors and that, and that we hope to honor and that will carry on this work. Um, I've always said it's a privilege to defend Cuba. And today I say it's a privilege to share the stories that you have about Alicia, 
the heartfelt memories of, of your work together. Um, and it's also a privilege to have counted Alicia as a friend, as a coworker, as a comrade for 25 years. Um, and if, if anything speaks to the reach of her work, her vision, her kindness, and so forth, it's there are participants in today's events from four continents. How many people can say that? Um, I was asked today to talk about her role and, and her importance to the National Network on Cuba, the NNOC, and especially as a co-chair. It's difficult to separate her NNOC role from the other group she worked with because of the overlap in, in the work and also because the network became more involved um, in various campaigns because of Alicia and her determination and her strength. Um, many of you co-chairs and NNOC members are involved in the network and in Cuba Solidarity because of Alicia. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the reach of those campaigns and her leadership in them. Before becoming the co-chair and before forming the International Committee to Free the Five, Alicia was at the forefront in the efforts to return Elian Gonzalez to his home in Cuba. This started with at the NNOC annual meeting and solidarity conference in Seattle, Washington in December of 1999, coinciding with the WTO protests there. I remember when we first approached Alicia to serve as a co-chair, telling her it wouldn't, it won't be much work, just a phone call every couple of weeks and two member meetings a year. Of course, that was a big underestimation, not to say a lie. <laughs> she wasn't fooled and she didn't want to give anything less than 100%. So she said she'd consider it after the five were freed. But we kept after her. Some of us were as determined as she is. So we kept after her and convinced her that the NNOC would be the most supportive and active way um, in the campaign. And she would be the best person to ensure that it would happen through the NNOC. As you know, she accepted and she stayed on for over 10 years, representing the absolute best of the solidarity movement. Thank, thanks in large parts to Alicia's efforts, the NNOC sent representatives to national and international events, including anti-war conferences, the climate march in, in New York City, the solidarity conferences in, in all, across, um, all across Cuba, the continental gatherings in solidarity with Cuba and Mexico, Venezuela, et cetera. And at many of these events, the delegates from other countries were surprised to learn that there was even a solidarity movement in the United States, much less one so strong and so longstanding. So we have to thank Alicia for that too, for helping us to spread the word of the solidarity movement in the United States. She was instrumental in bringing Cuban medical workers to NNOC meetings and follow-up advocacy in Washington, D.C., including meetings highlighting the success of the Cuban diabetes medication. And we met with members of the Congressional Diabetes Caucus to use this as a method of forming a relationship between the two countries. One person who she arranged to come to Washington was Jorge Jerez, a young journalist and friend of the five, particularly of Adriana. Jorjito's life and community as a young man living with multiple sclerosis is documented in the film, Power of the Week. During her, her tenure, the idea of city council resolutions against the blockade was initiated, with the very first being passed in Richmond, California, where Alicia worked with Mayor McLaughlin on various issues and including holding one of the national NNOC meetings there. In the fall night 2016 NNOC meeting in Chicago, she helped arrange an exhibit of Roberto Chile's photos, Fidel is Fidel, in celebration of Fidel's 90th birthday and just one week before his passing. And how proud and happy we were and our partners at ECAP were when Alicia and Bill received the Friendship Medal awarded by the Cuban Council of State. Please 
please let's commit to continuing and supporting her work as we send love and solidarity to her partner bill her children her grandchildren today and well into the future um, i asked a couple of the nnoc co-chairs who served with alicia to share their thoughts from sabukwe shakura she was demanding committed and focused alicia was also compassionate and driven she was determined, no matter how big the obstacle, to push ahead. We bonded as fellow, as fellow journalists, as well as co-chairs. And the final and most heartfelt message from Bamboo, she walked in the footsteps of Che. Thank you. Thank you, Nalda. Our next speaker, also a co-chair of the National Network on Cuba, but a person who has a much larger reach um, and actually has, whose organization, IFCO, has a long history uh, with Alicia. We are going to hear from Gail Walker, the executive director of the Interreligious Foundation for Community Organization uh, and Pastors for Peace. Gail? Thank you so much, Cheryl. Can you hear me okay with this? Yes. Okay, very good. Been struggling with my sound effects off of my computer, but I uh, just want to um, state what so many others have said, that this is a wonderful, beautiful tribute to our beautiful sister, Alicia, and it's my honor to be here and to, to share a few words. Um, I want to start out with a quote that many of us have heard, right? At the risk of seeming ridiculous, let me say that the true revolutionary is guided by great feelings of love. Of course, that's Che Guevara. Uh, but that sentiment speaks really so eloquently to the tenacious spirit of our sister Alicia Harapko. Uh, as so many before, there's so many who have come before me have already stated Alicia was an extraordinary person who had an undying passion and unquenchable thirst for justice. And I saw this firsthand in my work with Alicia, primarily through uh, uh, the work of IFCO, Pastors for Peace, especially the French shipment caravans, when she served as a route speaker for many years, bringing the reality of Cuba to thousands of people, helping to demystify the island nation and helping others to understand the significance of uh, Cuba's revolutionary accomplishments. And she did it with such grace and such, such style. Um, or when serving as a host city coordinator, receiving the caravan, uh, she worked with others to plan community-wide events when the caravans traveled through the San Francisco, San Francisco Bay Area. And I can't tell you how many caravans she participated in traveling thousands of miles to donate, uh, to make donations to the Cuban people in defiance of the U.S. government's genocidal blockade, uh, from computers to Seattle, uh, I'm sorry, Seattle's satellite dishes, sorry about that, Bill, uh, to yellow school buses packed with medical supplies and so much more. Countless times over the past three decades, working with IFCO Pastors for Peace, many times side by side with my father, uh, Lucius Walker, our founding director of IFCO, Alicia demonstrated her love and support for the Cuban people and for the Cuban revolution. She never separated the two. She did this work not only through IFCO Pastors for Peace, but as others have mentioned, uh, countless other uh, uh, organizations that she worked with, taking on leadership roles in the fight to return Elian Gonzalez to his father, as well as the international struggle to, uh, to uh, free the Cuban Five. And her contributions, of course, were much broader than that through uh, the solidarity initiatives that stretched from organizing the days of action that were mentioned in Washington, DC. Those were incredible um, times and, and Alicia was right at the forefront of, of all of that, as well as congressional visits to educate lawmakers about the critical work um, that was being done to uh, lift the blockade. The International Committee for Peace, Justice and Dignity Resume in Latino Americano, which she was editor of, and uh, we are also proud and uh, pleased to continue to, to rely on that important information to get shared through that important uh, publication. To the, the Network in Defense of Humanity, 
including uh, the effort to bestow the Nobel Prize uh, to the Henry Reeve Brigade. So I, of course, came to know Elisa even more uh, once again uh, in my ability to serve with her, her as a co-chair for the National Network on Cuba. And she took on this important work, as Nalda just said, you know, during um, you know, some of the most challenging and um, hopeful as well as challenging times in uh, US-Cuba relations. She did so bravely and boldly while fighting her own battle. And that's a testament to Alicia. She was a hard worker, yet humble, soft-spoken, but she really put her heart fully into everything that she did. And like so many that have spoken before me, I had this special opportunity to, to witness Alicia in action. Simply put, she was a fierce, la chuta, la, la chuta, I'm trying to get my Spanish on here, lucha, luchadora. She was a fierce luchadora in the struggle to truly build a better world. And she lived a life of service, and that is the true legacy that she leaves for all of us, for each and every one of us who knew her, and for those who are getting to know her through the words and the sentiments that we're sharing uh, today. I think that that's part of our, our responsibility as well. Alicia will be remembered. She is remembered, and part of that responsibility is on our shoulders. But I just want to finally end by saying, despite her years of activism, which we have celebrated here today, Alicia was solidly a person who was revered by family, revered by family. And Jeannie Kimball spoke so well about uh, her relationship with her family. Um, in fact, some of the most loving and tender moments that I recall when visiting Bill and Alicia uh, were simply uh, sitting in, in the kitchen with them, chatting about the day uh, as they prepared dinner, um, serious discussions about the world mixed with laughter and good food and always good beer. Thank you, Bill. Our joining or, or joining or joining them as they cheered on their beloved um, Golden State Warriors. Those were fun, wonderful, simple moments, but that, that, that I will always remember. Um, or of course, the joy of seeing their grandkids come barreling through the house, transforming the place into a playland and at the same time transforming those hardcore activists, Alicia and Bill into kids themselves. To Gabriela, uh, Eileen, Juanito and the grands, and of course to our dear, dear, dear brother Bill, you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing your beloved Ali with us. Her spirit lives on in all of us. Alicia vive, la lucha sigue, Alicia presente siempre. Gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gail. Um, so it was mentioned a little while ago that uh, there's people from every continent represented. Um, and so now we're going to go to the continent, one of those continents, Africa. We have another video for you. And so um, we have, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the video of anti-apartheid fighter, chairperson of the Friends of Cuba Society in Cape Town, South Africa, Father Michael Lapsley. A message from Father Michael Lapsley, chairperson of the Friends of Cuba Society in Cape Town, South Africa. I am deeply honored to say a few words of tribute to our beloved Alicia Drapko, a sister, comrade, and friend, a life partner, a mother, and a grandmother. Alicia's commitment to the people of Cuba knew no bounds. Until her last breath, Alicia continued her work of solidarity with Cuba Argentina, Latin America, and struggles for justice in the United States of America. Even when Alicia knew her days on earth were numbered, she continued working. The fact that she didn't want us to know spoke to her selflessness. Alicia did not want attention to focus on her rather than the task at hand. 
While they had their own distinct roles and contributions, it was not possible to speak about Alicia without speaking about Bill. Together, Alicia and Bill made a formidable team for Cuba, for Latin America, for internationalism. Resumen is an ongoing testimony to the internationalism of both Alicia and Bill. It plays a significant role in giving English speakers a way of understanding the realities of Latin America, both from Latin Americans themselves and a progressive perspective. Alicia's solidarity was both principled and pragmatic. Her engaging and attractive personality were further assets. Because she was not a dogmatic ideologue, Alicia was able to win many people to support the call for freeing the five, as well as the broadest possible solidarity with the people of Cuba and to end the blockade. During the long years of unjust incarceration of the Cuban Five, Alicia played a key role, walking beside them as they fought for their own freedom. Together with the Cuban nation and the worldwide solidarity movement. It was in that context that I came to know Alicia and Bill. We met as comrades and very quickly became lifelong dear friends. I had the privilege of visiting Comrade Gerardo in prison over a period of 10 years. Each visit was choreographed by Alicia. As Bill will testify over many years, Alicia became what we may call Gerardo's personal private secretary or external director of field operations. Everything was always done with style and efficiency, passion and compassion. In between times, Elisa was always plotting and planning what else could be done to free the five and return them to their loved ones and to the motherland. Today, we continue to grieve the passing of Elisa with Bill, her family, the Cuban five, the Cuban nation, and the international solidarity movement. We cannot understand why Elisa was taken from us too early. At the same time, we want to give thanks for and celebrate the life of Elisa Drapkov. The world is a better place because Elisa Drapko lived amongst us. We are better people because Elisa was our comrade and our friend. Elisa's example will inspire us to work without ceasing for a kinder, more just, and more peaceful world. Elisa, you will be in our hearts forever. I thank you. Uh, I'm sure you all noticed uh, Father Lapsley's uh, prosthetics. Um, at the closing days of the uh, struggle against apartheid, when the racist regime knew its days were ended, they, re they struck out at anti-apartheid fighters and sent Father Lapsley a, a letter bomb that exploded uh, in his hands. We're closing in on the end of the program. So I get a chance to explain how Alicia changed my life. She had a little help from a group called La Colmenita, the little beehive. It was a special project, Alicia said. We need a driver. Could I help? Well, and you've already heard about how no one says, said no. I said, oh, okay, but only for a week. I'll go to Washington. There's plenty of people in New York to take over. Well, when it was time for me to leave Washington, 
Alicia got that beehive organized. Federico, one of the smallest children, appealed, don't go, don't go. And who could say no? For two weeks, we lived in an amazing bubble of Cuba, right in the United States, of warmth and solidarity. When they boarded the plane for the Bay Area, I wanted to go. The, the tour was too short. Midnight shopping to make breakfast sandwiches for the little diplomatic corps, their abracadabra play with nursery rhyme characters plotting to free the Cuban five heroes from US prisons ended up now. What else can we do? What more can we do? There was no going back for me to business as usual. We're very glad to have some of those original young, uh, not so young anymore, it's what, 11 years almost, um, the Colmanitas in a video tribute and a short piece from Tin Cremata, who is the organizer and originator of La Colmanita. I remember Alicia as a very special person. I had the privilege of knowing her. She was a person who, when she entered a room, she would bring this feeling of peace and calm. We were together in the tour throughout the United States that the Colmenita did. And well, it was a really active tour uh, with a lot of activities and emotions uh, floating about. And I remember Alicia as a person who could calm us down, who we could count on. And she brought this feeling of security. I met Alicia many years ago in a tour that Colmenita did throughout the United States. And remembering her is to remember Bill. They were always together. They were always with the kids. And I remember that on that tour, almost all of the photos that we have from that tour, they took them. And they were always uh, had a smile on their faces. What I remember most about Alicia was the welcome that they gave us when we went to the United States. She was a person who was so caring and kind and committed to what we were doing. She never stopped. She never left us alone. She was always paying attention to what we needed, what we wanted, how we were doing. And there was a great connection between Alicia and all of the, ki all of the kids. Um, I remember that she she was always active. Whenever there was a problem, she was there. Um, and I would like to remember her that way as a person who was always uh, paying attention to us and to the children. And, you know, we were younger. And so um, it was the same kind of kindness that she showed us, that she showed with the kids. Um, she's a very loved person. We loved her a lot. She loved us. She took care of us. And it was a pleasure to know her. I remember Alicia with a lot of love. Um, I remember her gaze. She had a gaze with a lot of love and a lot of tenderness. And that tells you a lot about a person. Uh, when a person looks and you see transparency in their eyes and you see faithfulness and love, that tells you about the great person that they are. And Alicia with the kids that were part of La Colmenita um, in the tour that we did to the United States and also the gatherings that we did here in Cuba. I remember her love, her infinite love uh, for Cuba, for the kids, her respect and her faithfulness. That's how I'll remember her. When La Colmenita was fighting for the freedom of our five heroes on a tour, 
throughout the United States. We went first to Washington, then we went to New York, and then San Francisco. We went with a group of friends from different countries. Okay, that um, at the end was the uh, a picture of Alicia at the Aerospace Museum with the Cuban, with the children of La Colmenita, followed by a screenshot of the, that uh, famous quote, or I think it's famous quote because it's what uh, really compels me. Uh, before we end this program, I want to point out that in, in January of 2015, right after the Cuban Five were freed, another project that Alicia took on was initiated. Alicia and Bill started Resumen Latino, Latino Americano in English as a resource to bring news and analysis from Latin America to a North American audience. We know how important this is because the people of the United States are blockaded from accurate news about the South of the world, the global South. During Alicia's illness, Bill made a promise to her that he would keep their project going no matter what it took. So an ongoing, so, one way that you can make a tangible, ongoing way of supporting her, an act of supporting her, would be to make donations to Resumen. You can do that on the, uh, their website. It is www resumen-english.org. Uh, and, and even if you're not uh, doing donations, although hopefully people will on an ongoing basis, do read what Resumen puts out. There is information and articles there in translation from all over Latin America that you can't get uh, anyplace else and that is picked up in other uh, other news uh, sources. There's quite a bit of analysis there, and especially in these uncharted, the uncharted territory that we're under right now internationally, it's important uh, to use that as a resource. Usually we have a final slide that has a lot of this information on it, but um, we don't have that today. I do have a picture I'd like to share as I give thanks to some of the people who were absolutely indispensable in this program. I want to thank the interpreters Specifically, now I'm going to mess up her last name. And I'm so sorry. Beth Jaglia, Jaglia, Beth, help me. And Hasmin, I won't mess up her first name, Hasmin Rumbaut, who are tremendous interpreters, and we thank them for their work today. I also want to to thank especially David Chung from the People's Forum in New York. Without um, his very professional help through this program, we wouldn't have been able to do it as well as we did. I thank all on behalf of Bill and everybody who's worked on this. We thank all of our friends in Cuba who made these videos and the videographers and the people who made it happen. Uh, we thank you and we know this is not the last or the most exhaustive tribute to the life of Alicia Hirapko. Alicia vive 
La lucha sigue. Thank you very much. Thank you.